people may feel that there is a lot of problem in the urban segment, which is actually true. There is a huge, uh, sorry, in the rural segment, but there is a, a huge amount of deprivation in the urban segments also, uh, especially at the adolescent level. And as I, I noticed in the morning, somebody had mentioned, and that's one of the key critical points of girls' dropout, is the lack of toilets in schools. So everything is convergent. You see, the, the issue of uh, sanitation is again something which leads us to trying to empower the girls to attend schools. The issue of provision of to toilets is also, so it's a very convergent approach which is required. And uh, uh, so, you know, corporate philanthropy, corporate social responsibility is again a very critical determinant which can, which can take this forward. Now, uh, uh, it, it's, uh, I just wanted to share with you all that the, there, there were some questions in the afternoon on this whole business of CSR. It is uh, what we understand from the government, it's not going to be mandatory. It is going to be a voluntary uh, contribution. And this voluntary contribution, if it is effectively leveraged and if, it, if, we, if we collaborate very effectively, we can make a difference sectorally. And some of the key areas which, which we can think about as we move, what I would look at is that after the, we are done with this panel, if we can come out with three or four key areas which we can present to uh, today's group where, you know, for possible intervention at a later stage, that will be a, a good takeaway from this as to where can people converge and contribute if they want to in the area of improving girls' education, oh, sorry, the plight of girls at the secondary level. When we were looking um, at what would we fund back in 2009, at the start of the conversation, what we wanted to do was to find a really core issue, an important issue that if you were able to help to solve that, it would prevent a huge cascade of problems occurring later down the line. Um, and we looked at five different topics, all of which were core. Um, and one of those was educating girls. Um, and so, as a preventer of problems, not just for the girl, but for society, for the next generation, for ending poverty, educating girls in the widest sense, not just keeping them in school, but in giving them a, a rounded life education as well, um, is hugely significant. And, and I could argue it from lots of different ways. I mean, I could, poverty, uh, ending the poverty cycle is something that's extremely important. Um, if, we, if you want to have an engaged and educated workforce, then educating girls is one of the ways because they're going to be a significant contributor to, to the workforce in the coming years. If we want to look at population control, which is another reason that or another issue that India perhaps needs to start to get some control over, then we know that for every year that a girl spends extra in school, she's likely to have one less child. And that's a, that's a big difference that can be made. If we look at economic growth, we know that if girls stayed in school until they were 18, the contribution to India's economy during her lifetime, during that cohort's lifetime would be an extra $110 billion. And then if we look at it just from a, a sheer personal human rights perspective, out of interest, how many of you in the audience have got daughters? And how many of you in the audience are a daughter? <laughs> and how many of you have got sisters? This is an issue that affects us all. We're, we are all affected by how empowered the girls and women around us are. No matter where we are in society, no matter how well educated, no matter how successful, girls absolutely need to be able to contribute, to be engaged citizens, to be educated, to have a voice, to be in some sort of control over the choices that she has in her life, or even to have some choices over her life. I would guess that nearly everybody in this room, if not everybody, has had the benefit of that. It just seems really unfair that that doesn't happen for all girls on the planet. Thank you. Um, 
You know, we've all touched upon the subject of education, and, uh, but really what are some of the critical points of addressing the issue of empowerment in your view? Uh, what are the other things that we need to look at? Are we always going to go in a circle? <laughs> Um, I think education is, uh, you know, so in terms of uh, most important aspects to address would be obviously education, but child marriage. You know, 68% of the girls in Rajasthan are married before the legal age, 15% below the age of 10. It's, it's terrible. I mean, I, I, I meet girls who are married at three months. You know, she didn't have any choice. She didn't know what, you know, and parents are... Uh, in Jalor, where I work, uh, Jalor is um, really critical in Rajasthan because we talked about the 26 gender gap districts, nine in Rajasthan, and Jalor district in particular has the highest number of out-of-school children, the highest number of dropout, lowest literacy rate, and highest percentage of child marriage. They change the girl's clothes. The minute she's about 10 years old or something, she goes from wearing like a kid's clothes to wearing a woman's clothes. That's it. It's finished. Okay. And, the sad thing is that um, this data that I just quoted came out in Times of India, and it was this small, an article, and on page 13. This needs to be on the front page every day, till we get rid of it. It's disgusting that we're marrying off our children like this. Um, and then violence against women, and all of these sort of connect. So I think education and child marriage for me are like two of the most uh, important and critical pieces. Well, um, again, I'll take you back to larger policy level issues because I feel that it's very important that this group actually feeds into, you know, we don't want these little islands to be coming up here and there. There are certain uh, large initiatives which are sitting out there and which are looking for innovative solutions. And uh, I have said it before and what we are trying in our own way, uh, we are attempting to do is creating a, a, a productized solution. So while we know that the girls' issue is there, and there is, especially as we move towards as adolescence, it's, uh, it's more critical, there are two aspects to it. One is the geographical component, where if you look at the large populous states and you look at the low-income states, which, which is actually the large populous states, so if we can get some corporate action, if we can get the CSR um, uh, association to get into these areas, like if you can get into the, uh, the low-income states like Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Jharkhand, where there is huge, huge amount of deprivation in the girls, especially compounded by the fact that they are tribals, and in Chhattisgarh, you go to Madhya Pradesh. Now this is a, you know, ra let us get out of our comfort zones of being in Bombay. We need to go out there where the needs are there. And also, what do you do? I mean, I, I quite understand the dilemma of the corporate. Who, who, you know, what, uh, what Dasra was presenting in the morning was that uh, it's, it's more difficult to give than to earn. So you want to find productized solutions where you can commit your money. And that, therefore, it's very important that for girls' education, like what uh, Educate Girls does or what Lynn was providing, that there are certain products which are available, but it's very important that these products are taken to areas where they are needed the most. One was the sectoral aspect. The other is the disaggregated uh, deprivation within this deprived group. So if you look at girls, you look at the SCST component, and you look at the problem of tribal girls. Those are areas where we need to try and get into these funds. And why they, you can make the maximum difference is because you have a managerial approach, a professional approach to development, to social development. And that's where, you know, a small amount of money can catalyze a lot of change through large centrally sponsored schemes. Now, there is a scheme called Kasturba Gandhi Balika Vidyale, which is uh, uh, providing a hostel for about 100 girls in the most deprived tribal areas, in minority dominated areas, and it's for girls who've had sexual deprivation, sexual exploitation or deprivation of various kinds. Uh, but again, in spite of the fact that the government gives a lot of money, it doesn't, it needs to be handled more efficiently, and it could be possible that corporate sort of association could, could, uh, could uh, make it, the services a lot more professional. There is another scheme which is coming out of the government of India for tribal girls, hostel for tribal girls at the secondary level, for adolescent girls. So it's very important that this is linked to, to employability. 
Now we were talking about the previous session was on skills development and employability. Again, that disaggregation for the girls, it's very crucial. And uh, you know, there is a program called Mahila Samakhya. You'll be surprised to know that in Jharkhand, which is one of the most deprived states, we funded a program where they did uh, a sort of skills development in most non-traditional areas. It's very important that we move from the stereotypical, you know, like girls doing needlework and girls doing tailoring. Those are the vocations which are usually associated with girls or beautician training. So even the vocational uh, skills component needs to be uh, sort of non-traditional. So the, the, what they did, the completely deprived, very rural deprived tribal girls, they got training on, on issues like plumbing, they were doing masonry, they were doing cycle repairing. So it's very important that we link this issue towards productivity and towards, uh, towards vocationalization and placement in non-traditional occupations. That is also something, again, a productized solution will be possible, it will make uh, the, the corporates, uh, it will empower them to actually pick up these solutions and fund them. So maybe Dasra or maybe we together could create these kind of solutions for people to get engaged in. One of the great things that DASRA brought when they wrote their report and did their research was great clarity to the five cornerstones of issues for girls, where if you can um, fund those and work in those areas, they really, really make a difference. There's solid evidence that they can make a difference to the girls' lives, and most of them have been touched on. Keeping a girl in school till she's 18, or just keeping a girl in school for longer than she is now, um, not marrying her off early um, and not letting her have her first baby within the first year of life allows her to develop work skills. Very important, as Shabnam said. I think the other two issues um, are more messy and perhaps less culturally comfortable. So one is sexual and reproductive health and sexual and reproductive health education. So teaching a girl about her body, about how she can choose when to have her children, how she can choose to be more healthy and ready for that first baby, so that she ch stands a greater chance of surviving the birth, and her child stands a greater chance of surviving by, to five, to age five, because we know that in these very deprived areas, um, maternal mortality for a girl under the age of 18, where the majority of girls are actually getting married and having their children, is twice what it is when a girl gets married and has her first child at 21. And then the, her child stands a six, she six, the child is six times more likely to die under the age of five if she has it before age 18. So just taking those statistics, helping her to understand that she might have a choice and there are methods where she can control this outcome are really, really helpful to society, not just to the girl. And then the, the, the other piece, which perhaps isn't quite so comfortable, is around helping her to understand about gender, about her own voice, about her own ability to influence her life. And that's perhaps traditionally in the areas where these girls are coming from poor backgrounds, that hasn't necessarily been the case. And so it's not just about creating a change in the girl, it's also about creating a change in her environment and the people all around her to expect and encourage that change. It's very difficult for somebody to start speaking up if when they do speak up, it, there's a sort of stony ground. Um, and so it's not, this work isn't just about involving the girl, but in fact all of her stakeholders. Um, actually, I'm reminded of Safina, although, although she's sitting right here. I remember once she said, Lynn, reacting to your comment that the school is not only uh, for education, but it's also a safe space, you know, and especially regarding the environment and how you keep the girl away from exploitation, even from the family. So uh, I think we've all touched upon the prescription to a degree, but um, I'd like to know what, uh, what would you think specifically would be a possible, plausible solution? And 
in your own life and experience, have there been any sort of, uh, you know, any solution that has impacted you or your work, or any kind of uh, specific support that has impacted your work? You're asking me? Yeah. Again. Again, we're doing the rounds. <laughs> can we break it up and have Lynn go first? We can, we can have Lynn go first, sure. <laughs> Lynn, you want to go first? Just yeah. to mess things up. Yeah, can be chance. organized. Yeah. Give me a chance. I didn't get a chance to, to uh, rehearse my reply uh, mentally. <laughs> Um, I said at the beginning that we're, we're really not even halfway through this journey. We're, um, we're at the stage where we are now looking at organizations who have been highlighted as doing fantastic work in this area. And we're in India for two weeks and we're spending time going and visiting those organizations, understanding more about what they can do, and more importantly, understanding more about what we can do to help move this cause forward. So it's too early in the day for me to answer that. But I would like to um, just tell a story that um, a number of years ago I volunteered with a street theater group in Chennai. And the, this was a group of um, very talented singers and dancers who, who, and storytellers who went around to slums and um, rural villages teaching about maternal and child health. Um, and I was there as part of the interviewing team where we'd go into people's houses ahead of time, find out what the social mores and, and practices in that village or slum were, which would then get addressed by the play that night. Um, and it was all around knowledge building, around better practices for maternal and child health. One of the communities that we went into was running a program for adolescent girls, and the girls were mostly between about 12 and 16 who were in this program, and they were learning about um, life skills, how their bodies worked, the importance of getting a job, all of those sorts of things. And I ha happened to go to the house of one of these girls um, and talk to her parents about how was this for them, as parents of the girl who was going through this quite radical change. And the mother said, this is the first time I have ever understood how my body works. Our daughter, who's 14, is coming home every week and telling us things that actually here as adults, we don't know. And she's also telling her brother. And this is having a remarkable impact on us as a family. And I'm now able to go out and tell my neighbors about this. Um, and when I saw the change in status of that girl within the family, she'd gone from being the girl child, she was going to get married off fairly quickly, to suddenly being somebody who had some knowledge um, and some benefit that she was bringing into the family they could all learn from. Um, it was just very heartwarming and um, touching to see it. Not only had her own confidence grown, but her family's confidence in her had grown, and her status had been really elevated. 